What's the, the, the piece of equipment that you're most picky with? Probably sticks and skates for obvious reasons. If you had to pick one over the other. So like, you're going to get a random stick or you're going to get a random pair of skates. Which one for you is like, no, I need this to be exactly the way I need it. I wouldn't be able to make that choice. Are would you serious? No, Between skates it. and stick? Yeah, no, it would have to be. Yeah, yeah he's, he is right here. It would have to, anything else, like I could use any helmet, any pair of gloves. But the main two tools that you use to yeah. do what you do at hockey are yeah. what's on your feet to help you get around and what's in your hands to score. So to, to you, you both do. of you couldn't yeah, pick a compromise over stick or skates. Are we ready, guys? Yes, ready. Yeah. Testing. All right. Are you testing? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Boards podcast. This one is going to be a mix of answering questions that have been fired to us via Instagram story, as well as just touching on some topics that we wanted to go over in today's episode. So uh, the first question I want to hit you guys with, I'll start off with Tommy, is what is the best hockey experience that you have to date? Um, and PS, that was a question that came in from a, a follower on Instagram. My best experience has to be uh, my f- first tournament with GB. It was GB on the 16s. It, was, it wasn't it was nothing like a big tournament, but uh, I think it was in Dumf- Dumfries. Well, Dumfries won the tournament. The team, it was just a solid team. It was a great experience. What about it made it such a standout experience? Like out, out of all the hockey experiences you've had, why is that one ranking so high? I'd say because like I touched on another episode where when your team and you're winning you're not a team you're more like a family yeah that's what that team was and we was just winning everything was flowing nicely and it was just it just stands out above everything else fair play what about yourself mr jj i've probably got a couple Go on. probably less maybe two or three um as tommy said playing for you know a national team is always something that you know when you, when you play a sport and you commit so well to it it's always a you know a very proud moment when you get to play for a national team whether that be England or, or GB. Um, so, yeah, definitely representing GB is probably way up there with one of mine. More kind of, a little bit kind of close to the home aspect of things. Playing my first game at 16 at the old Rob for Rink was pretty good. Um, and then, you know, playing at the new rink when we opened t- two years ago, that was, yeah, that's top three for me, easily there. Fair play, fair play. So wait for one of you guys to ask me what mine was, but Chris, what's your most memorable hockey moment? Thank you. Say that again. I was just talking about something. I was spinning the camera and I was pointing way over there. <laughs> so I was like, where am I going? All right, sorry. Hey, you. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gary's mind always goes to something filthy. It's amazing. It's just in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> As you were, oh, JJ. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chris, what was your favourite hockey moment? Favourite hockey moment for me, there's going to be two. The first one is going to be the first ever trip that we took to Finland and Helsinki. I don't know how much detail I can go in without having to rate this podcast 18+, plus, but it was, it was, it was fun. Yeah, wow. I, remember, I remember you talking about that. that yeah, trip. It, was, that trip. it was an outrageous trip. I mean, all I can say is Finnish people know how to throw a party, especially Seppo. He had a Mexican-themed party in an apartment that in terms of the size, it would have been the ideal, you know, sort of setup for, say, five people to congregate and have a really good time, have a couple of drinks, some good music, DJ in the corner would have been fine. It was more like two, three hundred people in this space. It was rammed. You couldn't move your arms more than a meter apart without coming into contact with someone. It was rammed in there. And it was just an, an unreal time. It was a morning of playing on the Baltic Sea in a frozen shipyard on like natural ice it was technically sea ice which was just my first ever experience playing outdoor hockey on like a frozen sheet of ice and it was the sea so that alone was just standout and then after that it was just food and a few drinks with the lads that we met while we were out there and then in the evening after showering up and getting changed straight to this mexican theme party and it was just an outrageous time and for me i think the second time is two one was um filming an episode called um questions with when we went to florida with the extra ice and we filmed a video with aaron Ekblad in his house yeah, saw that unbelievable like, trick shot it in was that video. it was so much fun like that was such a sick trip but the one that ranks next to that is playing pond hockey with the president of finland as well which 
<laughs> which it doesn't even seem real. It's in one of our vlogs. The video is there if you guys want to check it out. I'll link it down below if you're watching this on YouTube. But our friend Savanti, who plays for a team out there called Capio Manita, was talking to me and Josh. And he knows how we get when we go out to Finland and we play hockey. Like we go out, we, we never wake up early in the morning because we've been out all night. And um, he asked us, just please be on time tomorrow. And we're like, yeah, okay, we'll be on time. Like didn't set any alarms, wake up to loads of missed calls. We're like, okay, we're late. We're meant to be there an hour and a half ago. So we oh. jumped up, got dressed, jumped in an Uber, went straight to the spot. We get there and there's these guys in black suits all over the ice. And there's this dude on the ice that everyone's like, oh, that's the president of Finland. We're like, okay, yeah, funny. I jump on the ice. I do my shift. I'm like elbowing this guy in the chest, trying to get the puck. Go back to the um to the side of the board, to the side of the rink, let somebody else jump on the ice. And the guy's like, that's the president of Finland. I'm like, yeah, that guy said that as well. You're not funny. Like, let's just play the game. And then Savanti skates over and he's like, you guys were late. Like, uh, this was the surprise. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, that's the president of Finland. And I was like, haha, that's funny. Unbelievable. So I pulled my phone out and I was like, president of Finland? Holy crap, that's him. And it was the president nice. of Finland just sat there playing hockey with us. Add that to the collection. I know, right? And I got a picture with him as well. And he said he likes our videos. That's my, uh, my, my top ranking hockey wow. experiences. It'll be those. I guess I, I mentioned three there. Those are the main ones. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. I'm impressed with that. I liked how you talked about your three my, um, best experiences with hockey. And the first one started off with a party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, was it wasn't party. even hockey related. It was like, oh, we ended up at this party due to being in Finland. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it was, it's, it's just all part of the experience, though, isn't it? It's like the partying, the, the people that we meet out there. Like, yeah, for sure. Those, I don't know what it is about Finland, but if you've never been there and you've never, you know, gone there, especially during the winter time, I, it, I think it should be on every hockey Been there a couple of times list. when I was a bit younger when we played, uh, like, what would it be, like, regionals conference. Yeah. We went, South East used to go to Finland every year for the same tournament in Turku. It was pretty good. It was, uh, yeah, you got to play at some good rinks. So it was a nice experience. Never got to party at 10, 11 years old, but... You know, I'll, I'll go there now. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, it should be on every hockey player's bucket list for sure. That place is, it's probably one of my favourite, I'm going to dare say I think it is my favourite country in the world. What would be your rating on TripAdvisor if you had to give one? With a brief, brief explanation, plus a five star rate, uh, a star rating, sorry. The friendliest people I've ever met. Yep. Everybody speaks English. Like, I mean, I've, in, in Helsinki, I've never met anyone there that doesn't speak English, which is great. Aside from that, everyone is welcoming aside from being super friendly lots of great spots to go out to eat and drink amazing hockey like during the winter there is just so many different spots that you can play hockey in it's you're, you're just you're spoiled for choice and then like crazy crazy apartments to stay at as well good coffee what's that place called that i'm obsessed with do you remember the name of the coffee shop rick every time we were there like i, I just had to keep going there was espresso house I think it's Espresso House. Yeah. It's like my favourite coffee. It doesn't sound very Finnish, but I'll tell you what, for it. <laughs> um, it's Scandinavian. I think you find them all over like Denmark and Finland, Norway. Oh, so it's basically like a better version of Starbucks. It's like a better version of Starbucks, for sure. But yeah, like, and Finland as, as a whole gets 10 out of 10. That's my rating for that place. Fair enough. So if you are a hockey player and you've never been to Finland and it's an option for you, make sure you go. Once this is all over. Oh, and oh my goodness. <laughs> make friends. Make friends. The, the best way to see anywhere, regardless, I think this is just a, a rule of thumb for traveling the world. Don't go to like a country and then go to the capital. I'm not saying that that's, you're not going to have a great time. But if you do do that, make friends with people that are from that country. Because like, obviously being from the UK, yeah. going to London as somebody that lives in England is one thing. But going to London with somebody that lives in London, like from central London, yeah. completely, completely different experience. Different, yeah. yeah, so for sure, make friends and, and go out with the people that you network with there. Okay, I'll put it on the bucket list. Damn straight. Anywhere to play outdoor hockey, I'm, I'm totally Have you not done that. that? Yeah, once when we went to... It would have been Quebec. Yeah, it would have been Quebec with yeah. England 13s. So that's like the only ever opportunity you get if it's, well, I say if it's cold enough. I don't know anyone who's ever been since since I went in like 2007 that hasn't had an opportunity to play outdoor hockey. Jeez. So I know there are, you know, tons of places in the world to do it. I know Chicago, there's a, I think, I think it's Chicago. There's like a forest skate path that you go through. It sounds quite cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's one in... There's one in Ottawa, Ottawa as well. The yeah, one in Ottawa looks unbelievable. When I went to Quebec, there was one there as well. Yeah, like anywhere yeah. that you can like skate a path or do something like that. Yeah, I'm totally up for that. Fair. Just From not Red Bull crashed ice. Just to Say that again? Not Red Bull crashed ice. Yeah, we tried that and we didn't do a good job of that. I think, I think we'd be fairly all right at that, but still it looks dangerous. Yeah. It's one of those things that 
everyone in the comments was like slamming us for um, not the, doing it, not doing it properly. Like, oh, full send it. And it's just like, you have <laughs> full <laughs> send it. I'm, I'm being serious. Wow. You have like, when you were down on the ground and you're looking at the actual track itself, you're like, yeah, that looks what I could do that. You're watching the players rip around. You're like, yeah, I could do that. I, c I can skate decently. Sure. Then you get to the top and you're looking <laughs> no. down like a six and a half, seven foot drop. And you're like, oh, I don't I know. Like jumping down glass. Yeah, and why. this is this is something that didn't make it into the video. So I, <laughs> I get there, and the guys that were from Red Bull that were dealing with us while we were there weren't like players. They weren't yeah. players or skaters, and they were like, oh, do you want to bring your own equipment or do you want us to provide equipment for you? I was like, I don't really mind. I'm quite comfortable to skate in anything. I was like, so long as it. They were going to give me. you skates. Yeah, yeah, they gave us full equipment. It was Bauer and Warrior. All of the protective was Warrior. The skates were Bauer. Oh, I've actually well, still got the. Go. <laughs> I've still got the Bauer skates and the, the protective somewhere around here, but um. So they, we're getting ready. It's somewhere, it's just here somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. somewhere. Chris, somewhere. I, was, I was filming with Hillary just before we jumped onto the, like it was time for us to do our slot on the yeah. track. And um, we go into like this place to get changed, all the equipment's lined up. Everyone's got like their equipment boxes and it's got little name tags on them. We're like, oh, awesome. So we're opening up the equipment and I'm like, these are, are brand spanking new skates out of a box. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, where can I go to get them sharpened? And he's like, sharpened? I'm like... Oh, I'm like they're new skates. There's no edge. I wow. need to. I need to actually put a hollow an edge onto the blade. I'm, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to yeah. skate. And he's just like, you guys are on the ice in like six minutes. I was just like, great. I'm looking at Lee from Wraparound. I'm like, he's he's like, you have two choices. You can either go and try and get them sharpened, which is unlikely that you're going to find someone. We don't even know where the location is for them to be sharpened in a baseball and, stadium. Yeah. In a baseball stadium, Fenway Park, yeah. and you might miss your opportunity to go down the track. And I was just like, I can't do that. This is a once in a lifetime. You went gig. on with no profile. No profile. My skates were fresh out the box climbed straight up to the ramp Unreal and went down the track i mean i i fell literally every every drop every I turn I, I don't think i'd do that it was not oh yeah and the skates were two sizes too small <laughs> jay you can't skate normally how did you <laughs> my toes my toes were which is ignore that my toes were like <laughs> no 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 I'm like i wouldn't take a brand new pair of skates out of the box and go <laughs> that didn't make it into the video and that's still I'm, gonna send it you I'm should not, oh look at you don't even <laughs> send <laughs> no but honestly it's, you that's should have put that in the video <laughs> please tell me you still have this footage somewhere yeah yeah of course of course upload it that video is on like 10 million views on, on YouTube or something please like the original video that we dropped but like, for anyone original. that saw that brand new skates two sizes too small the wrong manufacturer but I didn't really mind that it's whatever but they did not have an edge they were zero edge you he wouldn't be able to butter bread with, with those blades why but, would you part of bread with skates? I don't know. It's just, it's just, <laughs> that's just what came to mind. Like, like a, a knife, knife you know? Like a butter knife, Chris. Like a knife? Don't have a knife. Yeah, we go. Skate yeah, blade. but yeah, it was, it was, it was insane. But still, still, definitely a worthwhile experience. I don't regret it. And anyone in the comment section that was hammering me for not full sending it, that's, that's no, why that's I, why. So, that's yeah. why. Brand new skates, two sizes too small, no edge. Send like, send. No edge. Good for you. Guy got a concussion. Travis. Travis from Wraparound, there's a, a clip in that video where you see him hit the ramp and he landed. Yeah, and then he feet, just yeah. went over yeah, and you just see the back pretty. of his head. He had a helmet on, of course, but his head bounced off. Like, you hear it, like, snap. Didn't get back onto the ice after that. He was no, carted off. And it was only later on that we found out that, yeah, because we were going out for dinner. I was like, where's Travis? And he's just like, he's, he's not coming. Sitting in the dark room with a pillow over his head. Yeah, like with a cracking headache. I was just like, oh, man. It was bad. Yeah, looked it. I now know why. Yeah. But it was still an experience, though, for sure. Are you going again? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, this this whole COVID thing is kind of really messing up everyone's plans. <laughs> <laughs> Bit insensitive, yeah. JJ. I mean, it's a you know, it's a worldwide pandemic. It is, yes. No, I'm I'm joking. Yeah, like no, 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 of course. All so, seriousness aside, yeah, seriousness yeah it's, aside. like seriousness aside, it is a, a a major bummer. But it is what it is. We just have to wait and see what the world state looks like after this. Oh, if there's yes. any airlines left open and running to be able to fly us places. Well, that's a big thing on the news at the moment. So. Yeah. But from there, one of the questions that kept coming up in the uh, post that I threw on Instagram was, for yourselves as players, what would you say is the best part about playing hockey, for you specifically? It's probably like three or four avenues you could, you know, ma mainly, obviously, it's, you know, it's the love of the game. You get to do, you know, what you want, whether that be part-time, full-time or whatever, however old you are or whatever you do. But, you know, just being able to play Highly competitive, a sport that you've loved and, you know, been playing for however long. I mean, I, I know guys that live in America, that I played with in America, that, are, you know, two years after I left, that was it. They stopped. They went to college, played two years at college, and then that's it. There's no competitive league that they can, I wouldn't say not fully commit to, but, you know, there's not a, you know, a league that they can just play in because they still want to have fun or... 
they don't want to go into a higher league, play competitive, move away from home, get traded around as such. It's, I think we're, what we have in the UK is, is quite a, a good system for you know access to play hockey when you want. And yeah. if you want to play fully competitive or, like you said, you just want to put a pair of skates on and just enjoy the game that you you know you might be interested in or you know like the idea of so. If there was any uh, like, same question to you, I'll, I'll um, jump into what I was just about to say after after your answer. For you, Tommy, what is what's the best part? Um, I think I think I've touched on it quite a lot, but when when your when your team's good and you're a family, I don't think that happens in many other sports because, like you said, you get changed with that team, you get on the bus with that team, you you go everywhere with your team, and it it's it's not a team you turn almost into a family. And I'd say that's probably one of the best best things within hockey because the banter within that changing room, the joke and the laughing, it it just doesn't happen anywhere else. No, for sure. I think it's it's we touched on this in the last episode. Pretty much like everyone that we know that we hang about with is all relating to hockey in some way, shape, or form. Yep. Like I I don't think there's anyone that I really socialize with now that I don't either work with in terms of creating videos or is involved in the game in some element, which is insane. So I think that's definitely a point that, that kind of resonates with, with anyone that's involved in this sport. And I guess it's kind of unique to hockey, but I think for, for me, what's probably the best part is similar to what you said. It's going to be the people that you meet. Of course, like side note, getting to travel is, is yeah, one that's of what I was going to say as well. Yeah. There's sure. countries that you'll never ever think of going to unless you, you know, you play hockey. Mm. I mean, like I said, me and Tommy both went to Canada, America, probably 80% of, of Europe for some reason to play a tournament for, a weekend or a week or two so the, the travel experiences the you know the places you get to go in the world just by playing a sport well a sport that you love as well it's, it's second to none yeah for sure for sure like i've definitely been to some unusual places that i never thought i'd go because of hockey and the, the other side of it is also the connections of, of people that you meet you get to you get to meet and connect with people that are in all sorts of crafts or trades in the world you know whether they're like trades people whether they're lawyers doctors like surgeons there's just there's so many people that are involved in the game and a lot of the, the closest people that I have in my life right now are all players. Like, mm -hmm. they all play for a team or they're all... Based. It doesn't matter where they're based as well. It's some that are in Canada, some that are... I think that's probably one of the funniest things is I can almost point to, like, a map, especially in Europe and the US, like, all of the states, all of the provinces in Canada, and there's somebody that I know. Like, I could land there. Like, if I'm in Toronto, I could be, A, I'm about, like, do you want to go grab a coffee or do you want to catch up? Or is there somewhere that we can go play some puck? Nice. And it's that's it's awesome to be able to have that. I think that the people that I've been able to meet and the places I've been able to go is definitely the the plus for for myself. So moving on to the next question, which is out of all of the different pieces of equipment in hockey, what's your favorite and why? It keeps coming up. Oh, is this like getting some getting your favorite, but getting that new, or just in general like favorite? Both. Do both. I mean, as any hockey player, like we get excited over like a new pair of laces. Sometimes, you know, it's getting anything new is exciting. I mean, you see us walk over and see your your uh, little pile of wax. You see how excited? Yeah, like, yeah, that was that's little, the little things like, like, like stick tape, coloured grip tape, new sticks, the grips, <laughs> new like fresh laces. There's there's not much, you know. It's like so no skates, sticks, like oh yeah yeah yeah. Of course, that's like like when you start a new season and you you know. You've been on the last couple of weeks before the season starts. You get like a week before the season starts. Like you walk in, you got your helmet, your gloves, your sticks, all the team stuff. It's, it's like hockey players call it like early Christmas, like Christmas in September. That's pretty much what it is. So no, I think kind of getting anything new is exciting from a hockey player's perspective. The the best things are obviously sticks, skates, and gloves. Really, so you know it's always nice to throw them on, get the fresh smell for 0.2 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. If you if you had to pick in terms of all of the equipment that you have, if there was one thing that you wanted to have like full control over, in terms of what it is, what brand it is, like the colors, the way it's like, it, the, the, what's the, the the piece of equipment that you're most picky with? Probably sticks and skates for obvious reasons. If you had to pick one over the other, so like you're gonna get a random stick or you're gonna get a random pair of skates, which one for you is like, no, I need this to be exactly the way I need it. I wouldn't be able to make that choice. Are you serious? No, Between skates it. and stick. Yeah, no, it would have to be. Yeah, yeah, he's, he is right here. It would have to anything else. Like I could use any helmet, any pair of gloves, but the main two tools that you use to yeah. do what you do at hockey yeah. are what's on your feet to help you get around, and what's in your hands to score. So to, to you, you both do. of you couldn't yeah, pick a compromise over no, stick no, or skates because the problem is you've got so many different curves, so many different flexes. There's so like, many different variables. That yeah, you say random. 
cool, we could get a left-handed goalie stick. Pointless for me and him. No, I'd, it'd, it'd be the same handed, but in terms of like oh, the okay. flex, the curve, that would just be yeah, like question mark. Even there, even if you just said, look, you're going to get a right-handed stick, there's a hundred variables. There's so many different curves. The I have flex. one, he has one completely different. Yeah. I would have assumed... You have one completely different. I would have assumed you'd have picked like the skates have to be perfect and I can make do with a stick. But you're saying yeah, like it's even, the same. Even with a stick, like if, if you gave me a wooden stick compared to the stick I actually use, I'm not going to be able to go there and go like bar down, am I? It's even if you stick. gave him the same stick he's got now of a different curve, he'd be able to tell you before he even picked it up. Yeah. So would I. Fair. Fact. That's just how it works. Skates? No, I'd have to have perfect skates. Because otherwise, if, if your feet are hurting, you're just not going to want to play. If, your if, mind, if your, your mind feet are hurting, hurting. But this is what I'm like saying. That. That's why I assumed that you would pick skates over everything else. I can't believe that you're basically saying that they're as important. That yeah. just seems strange for me. Nah. I think if you ask any hockey player, you do, you do a yeah. Q&A, ask the same question on Instagram or Twitter when we get off here. You'll get the same response. I don't think so. 100%. 100%. I think if you have, if you ask somebody to pick between skates and stick, it'd be skates. I think if you went, you can have any random stick with your curve, your flex, then yeah, sure, the, the I, would take, I would take skates. But there's just yeah. so many different things. Like if you gave me one that's Jay's flex and Jay's curve, it just wouldn't work for me. Because Jay's not roasting him here. He's, he's heavier than me. So he, has to, he leans into his shots. So he needs a stiffer stick. So it won't work for me. There's just so many different things that come in with sticks. But I've seen you use a, a stick that this lead, I've just got another question that I'm going to have to ask you after this. But I've seen you use sticks that are like way above the flex that you'd use, and you've still been able to get by on them. But if I gave you a random pair of skates, sh like surely you see the logic here. No, see, now you're going down the avenue where you want us to say skates. <laughs> I would pick skates, Chris. What? Just say, say, <laughs> say skates. I pick skates. Chris. Say skates. Yeah. No fair. Like if that's if that's how it is, that's fair. Now the other question is, and this is something that I think comes up so often. Especially, I've seen it trending in a lot of the stick videos that we do. Flex. Yeah. How important do you think flex, ah, weight, and also kick point is? I can vouch for that, yeah. So do you think one is more important than the other? No, I think they're both kind of uh, as, as highly prioritised as, as the other. Like you said, with, with different brands, they have different models or, you know, different sticks entirely, different kind of, you know, what is one or the other, or you, you might have three models. They've each, like you said with the bow ones, they've each got different kick points. I, as we discussed in a previous podcast, got a hold of a couple of uh, the Nexus 2M Pros in the summer, tried to, you know, I, I like the colour side of things of them, they match kind of the colours that we wear at, at the Raiders quite well. Tried, you know, tried to get used to them. Um, same stick, stay, uh, same stiffness, 102, same right-handed, same curve, everything. It was just completely different. This stick was not as well not what i was used to and it wasn't something i could kind of mold myself into so i made the change and went back to the two s's so with obviously two different kick points it so it's blew not my same. mind if for the first time in a long time it was yeah. when i was like okay right i i'm gonna stick to what i know now i'm not gonna try anything else unless i have to so because i think that the, the image out there is that like a lot of people think it's it's just another way for them to sell something to you like, oh, this is a, a mid kick. This is a, a low kick. This is a, a hybrid kick. And it's just like, that's, that's, I, I, I normally hear a lot of, um, this isn't everyone, but some old school players just saying, you know, back in the day, that didn't matter. And it's like, fair, that didn't matter. Nope. But now the technology is available. So you had a graphite we... shaft that you just plug a wooden blade into and that was it. Job done. Yeah. 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 Heat gun. Yeah, your own exactly. Curve. Whereas now. It's... Do you think that's dead? Do you think that'll ever come back? Because obviously there were benefits to being able to do that, especially with cost. Because if you break a stick now, like if you broke a blade, which a lot of players snap sticks, sticks in the blade. Oh, that's non usable. You, could, you yeah. could just remove the, the blade, he gun, pop in a new one and go. I think when you look at, well, yeah, when you ask that question, I think that sort of thing has gone. I don't, oh, I don't know of anyone who uses a two piece stick anymore. Palmer. Who? Palmer Hockey. I remember that make, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the company based in Finland. Oh, that's the, okay. essentially yeah. like the, the evolution of, of where Titan is now. Like they, they yeah. use two yes. piece sticks. The only thing I, about, well, those sort of sticks, I think they'd probably be a little bit blade heavy, mm -hmm. and that blade heavy sticks are quite hard to shoot with. So that that'd probably be the only downfall I think of a two piece stick, especially if you got you know a, a good like light shaft, and then you put a blade in it that's either wooden or it's going to be a little bit heavy and it's going to be blade heavy. And I just don't think it's going to be. I think the durability factor as well, you know, from whenever I remember playing or had one or you know played or watched guys that had them. If a blade break, it was, or if a blade broke, sorry, it was, that was it. You know, they'd, they'd, like you said, they change it. As long as the shaft was still intact, you know, guys would go through five, ten blades in a month or a week or whatever. 
But I think the, the durability factor, kind of with the modernisation that sticks have taken now, you look at some of the rigorous testing, CCM, Bauer, Warrior and whatnot, put the sticks through when they make them to prove a point that, you know, they're trying to show that spending £150, £200 on a stick it's not going to break in your hands or it's not going to break after a week or something like that unless something drastic happens. That's the but, Yeah, like 90% of the time, you know, the sticks that we get at the moment in modern day hockey, they're a lot more durable, they're a lot more reliable than, you know, what people would have used 10, 15 years ago. So. I, I don't know. I think it's debatable because I, I think because of how things have progressed and the materials that, that stuff's been constructed from, Durability is a concern. You yeah. want your equipment to be durable to some degree, mm -hmm. but you sacrifice performance over... Yeah, there's always going to be that element. Yeah, that. over making something super durable. Because if you get like just a, a wood stick, that's going to be way more durable. Obviously, the thing with wood is that every shot you take the wood, you it get weakens. micro fractures yeah, and it yeah, weakens, etc. Carbon fiber is able to resist that better or graphite or the various composite materials that sticks are con yeah. comprised from. But at the same time, I think... The thing with equipment now, especially the high-end equipment, is that it's targeted at performance rather than, oh, let's see how long we can make this last. I, I feel like if you were to go down in the price point and the sticks are made from slightly different materials, I'd, I'd honestly feel like they, they would actually stand up in terms of longevity better than the high-end stuff. I'm sure that's something we'll have to find out about, for sure, so... I think so. I think with the the, the funny Got thing a new is video that when you, idea. yeah yeah when, when you when you look at skates, I think it's the it's actually the other way around. Like the the higher up you go, yeah, the the stiffer the the product, the the stronger it is, the more, it, more it's, support you have exactly. But yeah. and then the, as you go down in price with skates, the softer they get, yeah. the the less amount of time they're likely to last. If like for example, if I was to put you in a pair of top spec Bauer like vapor skates, yeah, and then I was to put you into an entry level pair or a mid range pair. The, the top spec ones would last a lot longer because the mid-level... I miss the, uh, the Bauer fan that now wants a pair of CCM skates. That's a very I good I'll, I said I'll look at them. Do you option? still have them on now? Hang, hang on no, no, no. What did he say? Just what tried did he say? Oh, I think I'm going to give no, no, them no, no, uh, AS3. I'll, I'll openly say no. I'll, I'll happily try and, and <laughs> test a pair of CCM AS3 skates. 100%. Yeah, I, like, I like the look of them. I'm a, I'm a very... Bauer fan gone CCM. I'm a very... Kind of visual person. If it looks good, I'll, I'll use it. Jeez. So, yeah. Sorry. Jeez. I don't even know where to pick that sentence apart. What a loyal fan, eh? I know, I'm right? Fan. I'm a bow guy through and through. But you're about to put a pair of CCM skates on. Yes. It, some NHL players is it just me? Is it just me? Just or is it like, like feel a... About. Is it just me? No, 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 no. no. I, thought, I thought, like, I mean, if you look at his Instagram profile, it literally says the bow guy for hockey. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Anything bow that comes through the door, yeah. I will be the first person to touch it and let you know what it's like. But you're going to be using CCM from now? Ooh, Not entirely, oh, no. I told you, I just said I'm going to try yeah. and see what they're like. I, it's, I mean, it's okay. 90% of the time, or no, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, <laughs> I am probably going to get a new pair of uh, 2Xs. Not the pro less, ones. Less superior skates. Yeah. Yeah, still using a two-piece construction. Yep. Yeah, when everyone else has got one piece. Fit my feet perfectly, yeah. like a glove. Yeah, because you... It's okay, JJ, you don't know... It's fine, better. it's fine. Got my feet, <laughs> I'll deal with it. <laughs> um, so, that, that's made me completely lose my chain of thought. The other point I wanted to go on, <laughs> in terms of sticks, right? Where do you feel the development of sticks is going to go? Because, I mean, I'll be honest, from here... I can't visualize what the hell manufacturers can do next to innovate. And also, this whole cycle of let's drop a new stick essentially like every every season. But what what are your thoughts on that? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. They're coming up with crazy ways yeah. to attract attention. That, that um, is it. With, with some of the sticks that have come out recently, they're just coming up with new ways to attract people to them. So. Do you think it's do you think it's just do you think that's wrong or it's right? It depends on what end of the spectrum you're looking on. You know, if you're looking from a, a, a pro kind of level, obviously, you know, all sports have changed for the better in the last 10 years. You know, no a footballer wouldn't be using boots or a football from 10 years ago and so forth. And hockey players are exactly the same. The game of hockey's changed. The equipment and the, the objects that we use in the game have changed in the last 12 months rather than the last 12 years. But the question is, do you feel like the frequency of how manufacturers release new products is warranted? 
from a pro from a pro end yes because you always want to have the best you want to be the best if there's something new that you know isn't going to improve your game tremendously but it's it's a mindset thing you know if there's something new out there you've got to have it if you're a pro yeah, athlete, no, that, you're going to have it i can attest to that because like when i like when i was learning how to skate and i started to get like mediocre at skating when i'd get a new pair of skates i would feel like I was performing better. Like I was more hungry to like get to the next part. Oh, definitely. It's a, it's it is a mindset new, thing. For sure. Which is why the market of new equipment appeals to, well, everyone, no matter what sport you play, whether you're, you know, nine or 10 playing whatever sport or a, a pro playing football or, or hockey. If it's new, you know, you want it. It's the excitement level, but also the, the mindset of, you know, this is new. It's newly released. It's informational stuff that, you know, they've just kind of put together. They're saying it can do this. So you think it's a good thing? Yes. From a player perspective. Yeah, from a player perspective. Let me definitely. let me flip the question. Yeah? Go on. Okay, now let's look at Apple, right? With the uh, the iPhones. They release a new one every single every year. year. Sometimes yeah. sometimes multiple phones every year. And your fanboys, granted, I'm definitely one of them. 100%. Yeah. You you jump on board and you get the next one. And it has these incremental changes like, "Oh, like we've increased the camera megapixels by x amount we've added a, a third camera to it that makes it look like a, an electric hob but things like that it's a lot of people would sit back and go it's it's not worth it because you know they they release a new product With and new there's charger. only these incremental changes new charger so you have to buy the new phone yeah yeah, yeah. here we go this is this is my point so like do you, that's that's the element that i'm trying to touch on do you think that's worthwhile because most people like a lot of people out there that don't want to go out and spend 1500 pounds on a phone mm -hmm. they'll say Oh, the new one's cool, but now the one from last year is half the price. Is half the price. Yeah. So why wouldn't we get that? So this is this is what leads me really nicely onto the onto this this question. Mm -hmm. You're a regular player. The brand new two S skates have just dropped. The previous ones from last year are half the bloody price. Couple of incremental changes. Which is the logical purchase to go for? If you're playing at a medium level, which is what 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 we kind of talk in here, weekly usage going. <clears throat> No more than on the ice, like maximum on the ice three times a week. As a mid mid range player, well, where are you on the ice three times a week? <laughs> as a mid range player, I know. I mean, we train three we days train. a week. No, no, no. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, like, as in, if they had a game over the weekend, because I know people that will be on the ice oh, multiple so times like, a week. Like they'll like skate with, twice yeah, like they'll, they'll, they'll skate with like two rec teams, okay. and then maybe game over the weekend. Right. That's what I mean. From a, you, you've got to kind of break it down and look at, like you said, number one, the the financial side, obviously. Skates nowadays are, are ranging anywhere from five hundred pound up to nine hundred, nine twelve hundred pound. If you're getting pro, custom, etc., etc. Yeah. So you t if we're talking mid range to top spec, mid range, you can even say three hundred quid for mid range. Yeah. yeah so yeah, three yeah. to nine hundred, should we say? Yeah, pretty much. Obviously, that's a you know for for everyday working people, that's a, a significant amount of money. That could be a month or two months kind of savings, or you know whatever way you you look at breaking down your salary at the end of the month. So you've got to kind of take into you know, the finance. I don't know how much you save, but geez, I don't oh, save wow. that much. I have no savings. Okay, all right. Um, maybe a hundred pound a month savings. Is that just me? Yes. Okay. That's just you. Sorry, as, 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 as we were talking, um, the financial side of things is obviously a big thing. Like we've said before, <laughs> prices of equipment nowadays are a lot, lot higher with, you know, the new stuff coming out. And like you said, they release it every year. I personally, if I was in that position that we're talking about at the moment, I'd go for the, you know, the, the year old pair. Like you said, there's going to be very minute differences. The fact that maybe one is called the 1S and one's called the 2S. Besides that, the, you know, the, the technology of the skate is going to be no different. You know, unless you're somebody who's, you know, I've, I've got to have it, then by yeah, all means. Yeah, but then that's like you. Why would you not then go for the 1Xs instead of the 2Xs? Why are you going back to the two X's? Because he has the choice. Well, yeah, that, but yeah, do you know what I mean? It. Like, it's, it's, it's the choice. Yeah, it's the choice. If if I had to take what was available to me and... I can see him trying not to smile right now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to kind of take what was available to me. If, yeah. if all I could get was a one X and, you know, don't get me wrong, they're probably one of my favourite power skates I've had. I've had like nearly three pairs of them. So, well, I have had three pairs. One of them was a hand-me-down, but I've had three pairs just because they were, you know, they were comfy. They, they lasted a fair amount longer than than other bows in the past and it was yeah it was a skate i was pretty comfortable with so but that that's the, always the question because one thing i've never never understood it comes in in multiple questions i could phrase when you have your everyday player that's just playing recreationally the notion of spending 
large sums. This probably goes against everything that people would expect me to say when it comes From to... From a rec side, yeah. if you see somebody in top-end equipment, you would automatically think they are unbelievable. Yeah. And they are here just because there's free ice. Yeah. Give it 10 minutes, you'll soon find out why they're there. But it's, <laughs> it's a... I think it's more of a... You, you I understand. Think. You want what you want. Like that, yeah, of course I, you do. I completely get that, but it's... I just I think that the like last year's top spec equipment is so undervalued and underappreciated in terms of the eyes of of quite a few hockey players out there that always jump onto the next the, the next newest release. But you could say that for all sports. You look at people that take up golf once a year. Yeah. Or you know if you haven't played on a range for a couple of years, you know a couple of buddies go, oh look, they just go play golf. I got oh, I've got to go get some clubs. You'll go and buy an electric trolley, all the you know all the newest Nike stuff or whatever you buy, and then a new set of clubs that cost you anywhere from. 300 to a thousand pounds you'll soon find out you know after the first tee that the guy's 180 yards into the woods that you know it's the age old saying all the gear no idea so do you think anything um, i think this would probably be a question you could answer do you think players get stick like if you're to rock up to a team and you're in all last year's equipment do you think that players will get crap for that or is it just a case of like nobody would really care like what, what would be your thoughts both of your thoughts on that i don't think if it's equipment i don't think anyone would care not not from the team that we're, we're in. I don't think anyone would either look at you differently or judge your game. Like, it all depends on what you do on the ice. And some people prefer different things. Like, it's not, it's new, you have to have it. It's new, if you like it, then have it. I kind of feel like this would be the same sort of thing as, you know, like those Canadian goose jackets that went round for a bit? Yeah. And they, like schools were banning it's a, it them. It is a trend. It's, it's yeah. definitely a trend. It's, it is a fashion trend. Don't get me wrong. I'll be the first person to say that. From uh, why do I feel like you have one of those Canadian goose jackets? No, 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 I don't. They're you like, should... are you are you silly? They're like a fake one. I don't, I don't know if he has a yeah, real like, one. Yeah, might have a fake one. No, so but find a good fake copy. I'm all over that for a like, hundred pound. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be buying a nine hundred and fifty pound jacket. Like, no way. No, I just I had this um this idea that I felt like if you were a younger kid, you know, like say 10, 12, maybe fifteen. Yeah. And you joined a team and everyone is in the latest stuff and you rock up in all last year's stuff, then you'll get crap I reckon for it definitely that. in juniors, definitely. Yeah, that's that's definitely. I, I felt like it would exist it's, there. It's, juniors it's juniors are like, thing, I, I want the new kit. Yeah. But you've seen in some of the blind stick tests that me me and Jay have picked the older one. The older one. But this is my point. It's that that's what I wanted to touch on. It's just I, I feel like a lot of players always jump on the latest and greatest, which is great. But I think buying the older stuff from the previous year or the previous season has so much value and it's always it's always kind of like brushed off didn't you do a video on this last year i, I, I lose track of the, the amount that i'm pretty done. yeah i'm pretty sure we well not we but i'm pretty sure I, we've i've seen a video where you kind of put the comparison to last year's and brand new and prices and whatnot and it's probably going to be the same for everyone like you said it can either be a, a fashion trend an ego thing to say i've got it you know two days after it come out or you mm. know i've got it there's only one other person i know that's got it so you know, it does make you feel good about things. But then, like Tommy said, from a senior perspective, playing at the level that we play, I wouldn't say you get a stick. You no know? one cares. No, no one it's cares. What, as long, you as, like. long as you can get on the ice and do what you need to do, win games and, yeah. you know, be involved and stuff, it doesn't matter. I know guys that still use, well, myself included, I've got a bit of body arm that's 10 years old. I've got elbow pads that are five years old. Looks that's, like a sports bra, kid you not? It looks good. It's, it's an old school <laughs> bow and knife. They don't make them anymore, but... <laughs> No, it's just, yeah, it's the same as when you're at school. You know, you've always got that kid that's got whatever on the new jacket and new shoes every other week. And you've always got that, that was kid me. that... Ki but I was a hustler. I used to get my stuff myself. S sorry, hustle how? <laughs> Primary school just walks in. Yeah. Sat and paid for this myself. I'm from East London, mate, but <laughs> chill. Paid for it myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, the way I used to do it, I used to do everything, man. Like when I was in, in high school or secondary school, it would be buying phones on eBay and then selling them at a profit. When I was younger, it would be buying sweets in bulk and oh, then yeah, selling we all, them at yeah, a profit. Oh, yeah, we all done that. No, we I mean, that yeah, yeah, we all done that, yeah. But I mean, I was like TJ Detweiler at a recess. I was hustling. Oh no, hustler kid at a recess. Come up with a long jacket. Wow. Want a sweet? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm being serious. That was me. <laughs> that was me. I was, I was always I really I tactical. Yeah, for sure. Ball. For sure, man. Can't see that. But, okay, all right. <laughs> Jay's like, take your word for it. We've got to open the jacket. Ten p a cola ball. Yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, but no, the other the other topic I wanted to touch on, which is kind of like very similar to what we discussed now, is um, you know sites like um, Sideline. Oh, big time. Is it, is it Sideline or so, Sideline Swap? Yeah, yeah. For anyone that 
uh, doesn't know about it, certainly go have a look whether you're a recreational player, new to the game, or... This video is sponsored by... Jeez, oh, I wish like, it was. Calm down. Sorry, it's a great what website. What even is it? Like, it uh, for buying used equipment. So it's basically like an eBay for hockey. Oh, right, equipment. okay. Oh, and lacrosse, football, and other things. I think we plugged yeah, in enough. How, how do you oh, know that good. Anything not, else? Not should, join it, should we put their link in the video description? We can well? do, yeah. We'll put the link in the description. <laughs> but... I'm going to say that to the camera. Yeah, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put the link in the description. Chris, will put that in the description below. Goodness me. Wow. Sorry, uh, you got me really excited. Great website. I can't talk wow. enough of it. How, how many times have you bought stuff off of this? Uh, I've bought two things. I've bought, I've bought a stick and a pair of gloves. So it can't be that good, surely? Well, yeah. But, but, well, it can't be that we, good. Well, no, we're in a different position. We... Lucky enough, get quite a lot of kit through hockey direct. It's not like we have to go out and buy everything. We, I know a lot of people through rec that do. Are we done plugging that website now? Sorry. Oh, I wasn't plugging it. That was just him. That was Mentioned him. It. That, that was him fanboying like, it. A little bit. Hockeytutorialshop.com. Just, just saying. Just, <laughs> just plug. throw that in there. Um, but no. <laughs> you could buy and sell equipment. There you no, go. No, hell no. I wouldn't do that. No, no chance. Um, but the other, it'd be it'd be immoral. I mean, like, let's not even get into that. It'd be immoral. What, what do you mean it'd be immoral for me to buy and sell equipment? Yeah, because everything that we get is is sent to us. No, no, no. I, I completely meant that as a separate business venture. But okay, no, I got uh, you. hell no. I'd rather leave that you, to people. You, you literally just said four minutes ago that you were the hustler in Chris's words at school, so you could hustle hockey equipment. No, I'm good. I, I, I don't want to do that. Jay, he does that. It's less kit for us, man. You need to be. Sorry, you sorry. To, you need to shut up. Sorry. <laughs> you, need to, you need to shut up. Sorry, I don't know why. As soon as you said that, I just you need to shut Del up. Delboy Trotter. <laughs> yeah. This little little three wheeler. How do you explain Delboy to the North American audience? Oh, all you've got to do is just go onto YouTube and type in "Only Fools and Horses." It's a great British comedy. I'm trying to think of like something that would be similar to. That. I can't think of anything now. But yeah, Google. No, no, no. Google don't don't give the US any more ideas to rob. They've yeah. already stole the Office, oh, Love geez. Island. Yeah, but both those suck. Let's not even get onto that. <laughs> let's, let's not even get onto that. Do you remember, thing all do you remember the other e the, you know, the other episode that we did about about consuming trash? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No. Anyways. No. Anyways, how many episodes of The Office have you watched? How many episodes of Love Island have you watched? I, I'm I, not I, watching that. I have not watched one episode of Love Island. I will. I will. Oh, man, both you guys are missing a treat. I can vouch for it that he has watched Love Island. <laughs> Oh, no. Yes, Ricky. Oh, lovely no. Ricky. I, I was thrown under the bus. No, wait. Here. Don't throw me under the bus. It, it wasn't under like the bus. I was at home and I was watching it. We were at, we were in Sweden and we were in a hotel and he was playing it. And I'm not going to lie. Like I was like, okay, what's happening now? Yeah, well, of course. Exactly. That's it. You <laughs> watched one or two. I didn't then go home and continue watching it. Oh, I like, did. I when did. I, when we got back to the UK, that was it. It was done. Because it, well, I no, still, Every year I'm like, right, I'm not going to watch this. Throw me under the bus, Ricky. I'm not going to watch this because it's not going to be as good as last year. It's not going to have the people are going to live up to the hype. Cool, two weeks in, you want to know exactly what's going on. No, I don't, I don't. Who's coupled up with who, you know? Don't, this is now a plug for them, like, jeez. I'm not going to lie, I haven't watched it. No, we're not plugging love up. I mean, no. we can also, it's not happening this year, sadly, so, we, you know, everybody that's, loses that's a, a couple of months of TV. <laughs> Jay's shedding a tear over there. Shedding a tear, but it's like... It's I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to shift you before oh you start God. talking about that horrible t t TV programme. But um, the other thing I wanted to touch on, that's why I was trying to take the conversation <laughs> before you rudely interrupted me. Sorry. Right? horrible tv show it's um <laughs> touching on the whole sideline thing like what they do there right used equipment in finland yes i was going to mention this this shop that you go to is incredible we should have it in the uk at least two or three this is my point hockey corner in, in finland in helsinki like they have like a massive section of their shop is dedicated to good like good quality in good condition secondhand hockey equipment is this to buy or to rent? Because I think the radio both. video says rent. Both. Oh, okay. You can do both. And like that, it just, I don't understand why nobody in the UK is doing that. Because hockey is so expensive. Equipment is so difficult yeah. to come by. There's so many people selling it online and it seems to be doing. Why well, would you yeah, not just post it, it Facebook all in Marketplace one place? is very good for some equipment. Obviously, the, you know, the hockey community isn't as big as what it is in other countries. But of course. But I've bought a couple of leg pads, elbow pads off of Facebook, off of people that have bought a new pair, whether they be rec or whatever, gone, oh, you know, I might have bought the wrong size or, you know, don't particularly like it. Put it on put it on Facebook, put it on eBay. You know, it's it's, it's good equipment. It's, it's even for people like where Jay said we get a lot of kit through obviously playing where we do and stuff like that. It's good for us as well So because the old kit we now no longer need, we can also then pass that on for others to use as well that isn't trashed and... Not yeah. usable. Yeah, this is the thing, because I feel like if, if more of that happens, because there's a lot of, like, one thing I don't understand is, is, especially in England, the interest for hockey 
is definitely growing here. More people are now more than ever, in my opinion, aware in terms of, of the messages presence. that I get. Yeah. They're, they're aware of it. They want to try it. They want to play it. But then you find out, number one, contacting the teams. If you don't know anyone that plays hockey is a nightmare. It's very difficult. I yeah. always tell people to try to find their Facebook pages because it's always a good place to be able to communicate with a rec team. It's, yeah, it's one of them. It's like, how, how well is that managed? Has somebody got exactly. direct access to that? You exactly. send a message. It could be weeks sat there for back. weeks before you even you know get a sniff of a, a, a reply so yeah like stuff like that and then after they've managed to make contact with the team it's like oh like here's a list of the stuff you need to go buy then you look at the price and you're like yeah. what and it's cool. a maze of, of figuring out what, like what how does the sizing work what like why is the same pair of skates they're both called for example bower vapors but one costs 800 pounds and the other one costs 300 what's the difference like stuff like this makes it diff difficult and i think if all of a sudden people could go to a store borrow rent the equipment i know some rinks do have this but obviously the equipment that they have is limited i think if there was one place that you could go to where you could rent puck stop you should do this if you could rent the equipment no 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 don't plug somebody else we'll do this <laughs> <laughs> we'll do this we'll find a little storage unit and I, just, just go like for it. years ago I, I remember having the owner of, of puck stop richard i remember having a conversation with him just saying like dude like why is this something that you haven't done i know that he did go into the details of why it was difficult yeah but i i just i i feel like they scope for it to be done, not necessarily by a store that already exists, but it being a completely separate venture. Because something I don't, brand new that people just get excited about. I, I just I think it's it's feasible. I really do think it's feasible. And when you see like I, I want to get more information about how places in Sweden and Finland do it. I know that the audience and amount of people that play hockey there is very different to here. But that's not to say that it's, we, we can grow. Like, maybe not in any time soon to the numbers that you know, like you said, yeah. the Scandinavian countries are dealing with. But yeah, but aside from that, you can if, get the numbers up anyway. Yeah. And it's, it's to build interest. And of course, person's going to buy an £800 pair of skates off the game. For the first time. I like ice hockey. I've yeah. seen a video on YouTube or I've seen my local team. No, it's not going to happen. That level, you've, you've killed the level of interest with the price. price. Yeah. Exactly. And this is what I'm saying. It's if, the, if, a, if a hockey store can survive, there's multiple ho hockey stores in the UK that just sell hockey equipment. Obviously, the different sizes, Puck Stop being the biggest, we're all aware of that. And then there's others. But if they can survive as businesses... Off of selling brand new equipment. Yeah. Why couldn't a hockey store survive renting and selling used equipment? I think you could. You would just have to. You'd have to market it very, very well. Yeah. And at the end of the day, um, don't mean to cut you off, Tommy. But at, at the end of the day, if you looked at the amount of pro players in the UK, people that are getting paid or reimbursed somehow to play hockey mm -hmm. versus recreational, which number competitive and rec? Which number has more players? I would definitely say the recreational side. Exactly. There's, I know some links that have got three or four teams. This is my point. The, the problem I think is most most people, even like as as a start, like when someone's starting off, they'd be, no, I want my, I want, I want a new kit, I want my own kit. I think that would come in quite a lot. Yeah, like, and then we fall back to the fashion the ego side. Exactly. It is, it is, it is a vicious like, circle. I know my, my one of my brothers plays rec and he is the worst for it. I want the new kit, I want this, I want that, I want that. I've seen on Instagram, I want it. You you play once a week. <laughs> uh, do, do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is, you you know, haven't had your skate sharpened since twenty ten. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 chill you, out. Like, you play once a week, you yeah. don't need that. Your skates are not damaged. Why do you need to go get the top end so you think the days of players just being able to go this is good enough to get me on the ice and then let me go play the game versus oh new shiny the new shiny like, side I, don't, I don't think that's ever going to change i don't yeah? think it's ever going to change people get excited by new things you buy a new car you know it's it's a it's, it's a good feeling people like new things but then on the other end of the spectrum like you said if you're trying to grow the interest of a game for the amount of people that recently certainly from our perspective at Romford we've had a you know we've had a lot of new fans come in that Definitely. even knew the rink was there in the past that the Raiders were there in the past and didn't know anything about the new rink until fairly recent for whatever reason yeah I don't know friends family came to watch a game or you know you might just walk past it and um, thought about jumping in you know the amount of I know certainly our, our learn to play program has got a, a lot of new kids in just through like I said people coming to to one of our games and seeing it bringing their kids and them going like oh you know I want to give that a go so yeah, from your perspective, I, I can definitely see it happening. It's just going to be, you've always got to look at the, the feasibility aspect of things. Is it going to be financially viable to do and promote at the same time? I we'll just, have to see. Time will only tell, I'm sure. I think it's, I, I'd love to discuss this idea with somebody in detail that, you know, could perhaps lay out blue, blueprints of, you know, this is the way that you need to do it. This is how you need to start to see if it's something that could be done. What were you going to say? I thought you were going to go, blue, blue. <laughs> Because you didn't go straight in with blueprints, you went blur. <laughs> I saw your face, you went blur. 
Blue, blue prints. Tickled me. <laughs> Tickled him. I did, because I'm looking at you, you went, yeah, I'd love to see somebody lay out some blue. <laughs> Thank you. Blue prints. It takes it takes him like five seconds to just sorry, go, sorry, sorry. but no, that's fine. It's, it, I think it's an interesting point that has, I think it has scope and I'd like to kind of dig into it a little bit to see how feasible it is. But I guess it's one of those ones where I think, like you said, if if a, somebody was to do it brand new, I think it'll take certainly a, a year or two of you know hardcore kind of you know plugging it to to get it off the ground to a point where you know, like you said, these companies like Puck Stop and uh, Skate Station, Hockey Dog, and whatnot that are you know have a very big online presence. Uh, you know, anything that happens for them, people are always you know thanking them and whatnot to to promote them, which is good. I think for a, for a company to come off the ground and do it, it yeah, it would take some time. If if one of those big companies was to to do that as a secondary side of their business, I can certainly see that working out big time. What are we on time wise? Fifty minutes. Oh wow! What? Fifty. Fifty minutes. Yeah. Jesus. How Holy! Many f- How many points we got left? We don't have any points. We've just been going. Oh. Oh right, that's why I went and sneaked over to get another battery because you were still talking. Oh. Like, we could cut this into t- we could cut this into two. No, like I was going to go through more questions. Like the points that I had there, we've we've gone through them. Jeez, you could chop this for two. Oh, just, just keep going, and we'll chop yeah, it into just keep two. Going, chop it for two. There you go. How how long do we have on that battery? The battery's flashing red. Oh, so it's going to cut out any second. Yeah. Oh, so sh- right. should we should we just wrap just it? Cut then? this one there, then. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's just wrap it. Did you, unless you had anything to say? No. 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 Okay. So I think we'll, uh, we still good, Rick? Yeah. Okay, you scared me. <laughs> we'll wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes, phew, yeah. off. But um, yeah, I think we'll leave this podcast there. There's still a lot that we want to talk about about this subject. Um, there's a lot more kind of in-depth that I want to go into in terms of the future of hockey equipment, the development, mm-hmm. how far can things really be pushed? Are we going to be seeing more holes cut in sticks or <laughs> the tops of the blades being shaved off or the blades being made? Like, there's so many oh, random sticks out there. Yeah. Jeez, more holes being put in the blades. There's a lot the to discuss. The amount of sticks we're going to get. Yeah. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait for that. Gear nerds. I'm the worst one to talk. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. I think we'll leave this episode there. There's still a lot that we want to talk, touch on that we can follow up with the next episode on. If you have any questions about what we've talked about in this episode or any suggestions for a future episode, leave those Keep down below in the comment in. section. Keep them coming. And that's obviously if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere else, send us a message. Yeah, definitely. About it any possible ideas that you have for future episodes, but there's still a lot more coming. But do you guys want to sign up? Yeah, thanks, guys. See you later. Yeah, thanks for listening and watching, guys. Keep the questions coming, and uh, yeah, over and out. Thank you very much for watching, guys. <laughs> Rate, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Remember, a brand new episode every Monday, and I'm thinking that we're going to also be doing two episodes a week by the looks of, of the way things are rolling. We'll try and roll out a second web- episode maybe on a Wednesday or a Thursday as well. So yeah, every Monday for sure at minimum. But thanks, yeah. guys. Over and out. See you yeah. later. Take it. <laughs> Is that a second episode or a second website? Episode. You said you were going to say website. You lent in to say second web episode. <laughs> you did, didn't you? you did. See? You are unbelievable today. It's been a long day for everyone, Chris. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, my English is no good. I am Somebody a- forget me some <laughs>